Okay guys, welcome back. So we've still got our special guest, Chris Michelle here from Mizuno. So we're gonna do a, a ball test today, Matty. Um, this one's been asked a ton. A ton since we came back to the PGA show. Because we hit, we hit uh, at the Mizuno booth trying the driver. We used the new ball. Yeah. Didn't really dive into it, but a lot of curiosity from that video. Because one of the things when we left the Mizuno station at the PGA show, and it was our first stop, yep. and really we were there to try the driver, and the ball surprised us, and, <laughs> and, uh, and you guys came over and you went, hit the ball, and, yeah. and you'll test that with the driver. I'll confess I didn't know there was a ball there. I just saw a Mizuno ball, I went, oh, that's cool. It's so a well-kept secret. It was, that's what we were I going know. Really was, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was such a good surprise, because when we got there, we started doing some tests, and, and it was seriously windy. I mean, it I remember was how windy not that ideal day, day was. Test, it was right. blowing, yeah. what we would say in Scotland, blowing a hooli. Um, <laughs> in Scotland, we would call that. So you were just hitting these things so straight, and yeah. you're like, is this the ball? I is know. it the driver? That's the is first it thing the combo? you said. You're like, oh, I, like, we, I don't know what, what one is, is flying so stable here, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is why we've been dying to get back in and do more testing with this. Right. And, and I think we, we wanted to wait until we, we knew you were coming and right. obviously we wanted to do the testing with you because we can then dive into more of the engineer behind it. Talk a little bit about the Tour versus the X sure. um, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, maybe give us a, a quick overview, a quick rough um, you know, spiel on, on, on the, the two differences between them. Yeah, so Mizuno's excited because we haven't had a golf ball in the Western world in a really long time. So okay, so maybe there ever. was a ball in the Asian market. That's right. So we okay. about 15 years ago, we launched the first ball in Japan, wow. and then it went over to the UK and was in Scotland for a I little remember, bit. Yeah, I do remember. My brother went to ball. Japan like 10 years ago, and he brought me a sleeve of Mizuno balls. Oh, nice. So yeah. I, I have in my house somewhere, I have the old ball. I should have brought him in, I forgot, but yeah. I never played with them because they were so rare. But I'm glad did you see. didn't bring that one because we've definitely made some <laughs> weeks <laughs> that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit since then. Right. But yeah. no, so that we're excited to have this because we're looking for a global ball to yeah. launch. So there's a different unique ball from Japan, unique ball from the U not a unique ball from yeah. Japan or UK, one where we had a shared technology between them. Right. So we've been doing a lot of research on the dimple patterns of mm -hmm. golf balls, which of course is very important for Huge. everything. Yeah, yeah. How the balls can perform in the wind, how mm -hmm. it's going to perform going into the green, you name it. So we came up with a new, what we call our C dimple, a cone right. dimple design. And that was something that we got very excited about. Mm -hmm. So we were like, this is the perfect opportunity to launch it to the world. Okay, awesome. So we've got, we've got two, uh, two different compressions we, we kind of briefly spoke about there. So right. we're, we're in the kind of low 90s and then 100 and... Yeah, about 113, 113. Some, or 110, 113, okay. somewhere in there. So, so pretty firm. That's right. So yeah. it's the RB Tour and the RB Tour X. The right. Tour being the softer of the compression yeah. with the black number yeah. and the Tour X being the firmer compression. I believe it's 110 uh, is the compression on it. It's got the blue number on it. And the yeah. big thing is, how, which one's going to fit you better? Yeah. Is you need more spin, less mm. spin, a little bit more ball speed, a little bit yeah. less ball speed, a little bit more control. So I love that. It's got the blue number on it because every, really everyone has it's went really black and red. <laughs> right. and I love that Mizuno went black and blue. It looks good. It's, yeah, it's signature, good, yeah. It's isn't nice. it? Um, I mean, you know, why don't we why don't we get you hitting Matty? Because there's going to be so much that comes yeah, out as we go we and, and as the numbers start to appear. So it's perfect. Uh, what do we have? 54 degree wedge to start with? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, Let's sure. hit a few with that. So Matty, you made an interesting little point. As we started this, this is, uh, you're going to make a ball change this year. A hundred percent. You're going yeah. to go to a slightly softer golf ball. I think so. So Chris was asking me what ball I'm playing right now. I was telling him about the XV. Yeah. Um, and I think it's become clear that, especially in the mid irons, that spin has been getting a little low for me at times. Mm -hmm. Just the way I deliver, I guess, somewhat shallow. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that a non, well, in this case, I know it's different because your X ball is the spinnier model. Right. But I'll be looking for, I guess, the softer compression ball from whatever company ends up being. And people will have just went, oh, what? The, the X ball is the spinnier golf ball? Right. Let, let's talk briefly on yeah. that. Yeah, it's funny how there's, it's almost, you're starting to see a lot more truth in engineering coming right. out in terms of what compression actually means yeah. for performance. Compression, as you get a higher compression, typically that ball is going to exit quicker yeah. and it's going to spin a little bit more. So that's why you see our Tour X, which is the firmer golf ball, mm -hmm. is going to be the higher spin the higher option. The one, as you get in the lower compression, yeah. the ball really kind of melts into the face a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. It's actually going to take some of that spin off. So again, it's what fits you better and what are you looking to do with your For ball? Sure. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, just this thinking about that impact interval and, and, and the golf ball staying on the face, compressed for a little bit longer. Yeah. I mean, that makes that makes perfect sense. That right. absolutely makes perfect it's sense. It's the first time I've heard it described that way, yeah, but it yeah. does make sense. I know, yeah. I know. I mean, that's, you know, I kind of think of, uh, you know, Ping and what they've done with that LS Tech head a few mm. years back by changing the, uh, the roughness on the face right. and, mm -hmm. and trying to kind of lower the exit of the golf ball mm. from that head in order to narrow the spin loft window. Um, with with that and it, it just kind of you know when I hear that about the, the compression and, and the right. exit of the golf ball it makes a lot of sense it's a very yeah. similar idea yeah. exactly mm -hmm. okay all right Matt so let's hit a few more that was that's a good one <laughs> yeah well you could have dropped the mic and walked off at that one that was <laughs> the that was first the first perfect. wedge shot on every wedge video we do is always the best and that's <laughs> always sure. downhill from there really good we always thought, Chris, it would be a good idea to have a, a test robot um, on, you know, on the TFT <laughs> channel. And little do we know we have one, there but you go. Uh, he's in human form. It's been, out of, it's been out of service for a month, but it's getting back. <laughs> little oil got you going. <laughs> little WD-40. Right? Required an oil change. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's three sort of ideal ones, yeah. Matty, to be honest. I'm, it, it feels nice and soft. It looks like it's spinning... Nicely in the in the window that we generally look for, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Launch good. looks. Uh, I don't think I usually launch it that low, which is good. I like to see it come down a little bit. I mean, that's that's the window we tend to see. Um, so sort of better players launch it in that twenty-eight to thirty window, as long yeah. as you know if we're getting um, good sort of impact conditions. I hit those well. Like that's yeah. Those about those as well the, as all three of those sounded really really clean, really well struck. Okay. Well, to go into the launch angle like you were talking about, it is tied hand in hand with that spin rate mm. typically. So when you get that lower spin, mm. typically it stays on a little bit longer yeah. and launches a little Comes bit more penetrating. Yeah. Interesting. All right, Matt. Let's, so you, uh, what'd you give me? The X? Well, let's go to the X now. Um, Chris, we tested a golf ball um, by a company called Cut. Um, yes. So that's what uh, mm -hmm. you've heard of those guys. So I have. We, we saw some really interesting things and in most golf balls in the market, they're, they're somewhat performing quite similarly and it's your preference and, and uh, you know, it's, it's quite hard for, I think for people to do a lot of testing and, and find big differences between certain golf balls. Right. But this was a golf ball that we, we kind of found was, was spinning up to a thousand, sometimes a little more than a thousand on, on any given six iron. So if really? we went from one golf ball yeah. to another, we could, we could change spin by a thousand. That was wow. massive. And just to your point there about the, the launch angle and how that's tied to it, right. the launch angle was significantly lower it was, yeah. um, and the spin was significantly higher, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. Interesting. And, and that's at my speed and at Ron's speed. So we had Ron in who, who hits his six iron about 160 or 165. Yeah. He got a thousand extra spin too. Wow, what okay. his speed. And yes. he was he was your absolute typical um, you know, handle raiser, comes in a, a little bit shut, a little bit of early extension, mm -hmm. sort of, you know, has to lift the handle but de lofts the golf club and right. and just the spin loft window gets so narrow he really struggles to kind of get the spin into the four thousands. But right. you know, he was up in the, the forty six hundred region oh, wow. with, with so that golf ball, him, which true. was which was massive for him. So um, you know, that was, that was a really odd one for us to, yeah. to, to find a ball that was providing that much It's difference. great to find an extreme because then in those fitting instances, you can do something. Yeah, so that's I mean, great. When you don't really have the capability of going sort of outside the loft parameters, you know, right. we can maybe weaken it or go with a, a head that has a little bit more of a traditional loft. But if that still doesn't provide the, the, the kind of flight characteristics you want, it's a little trick up your sleeve For to have sure. a golf ball to give really you is. that little better uh, spin window. That's very true. Yeah. All okay. right, Matty, let's see what the X does. Okay. Firmer compression. Nicely done, very similar number. And these are all sort of 116, 117 yeah. so far. I didn't hit that quite as well, yep. but that, okay. that ball spun, speed just dipped a, spun little a lot bit. more, didn't it? Good pass. It's more solid. Yeah, that's good. It's more spin. Yep. Hoping that's closer. Yeah, that should be right on our 115, 116 number. Huh. Those are all more. So yeah, definitely a little, little lower launch, yep. 
quite a bit more spin. I mean, that's, that's, that's a, a decent amount, yeah. isn't it? It really is. Interesting. So given us a different apex, land angle hasn't changed kind of too much, but... Um, so those are flighted five feet lower with the extra spin and lower yeah. launch. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. great. That's really cool. Okay. There's not much that usually makes me hit a wedge lower, that's for sure. <laughs> no. It's usually like too yeah, high. No, it's anything. normally very high. Okay. All right, so Six let's um, let's go to the uh, the iron now. Pulled it a hair, but pretty Just good touch. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that. Fifty six hundred. So we've been yeah. we've been working with Matty recently, Chris, to try and get um, try and kind of keep that spin rate up a little bit for as much ball speed as he has. Right. Um, you know, we found that his, his last year's golf ball was kind of getting in the the low fives, right. and was becoming a little bit of a flyer hazard. I believe that, yeah. especially get a little tug on it, it was probably going miles. It was, <laughs> I mean, we, we saw it, didn't we? We, we were seeing the odd kind of pull going two fifteen. Yeah, you know, really yeah. long. It's like not doing me any favors. Yeah. That's right. For sure. Absolutely none. Yeah, nice. Uh, that's that's a really nice window for you as well. One hundred and twelve mm -hmm. feet. Yeah, really good. I, I felt like I pulled that a bit, and it would go long right, mm -hmm. and it coming up pin high is nice to see. Yeah. That's, that's a nice. fraction thin. I really like the flight of that though. It's two balls near the center of the face. Yeah. What's going on here? Is there some kind of a technology <laughs> involved? <laughs> some kind of a center face technology uh, going on here? <laughs> the low toe is going to be feeling lonely. <laughs> That's the toe. <laughs> but still pretty good. Still pretty good. So normally I'd expect that kind of shot to be like 4,700 or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is kept it up pretty nice. I like that. That's good. Pretty consistent. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's a nice range. Flight hasn't really changed too much. Huh. No, very, really happy with that. All right, onto the X ball. Onto the X. So still looking for that. See, this one... Looking at that last spin window, Matty, this could be perfect for you. Yeah, it could it just spike it up just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. What do you think it should be? 57? I mean, in an ideal world, if you can yeah. live in there, you'd be, be you know, you'd have tons of control. Because the last time when we had you 5,800 to 6,000, it regulated your, your distance, uh, distances and you were back. It's a 200 on the carry, which is plenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it does, no, it enough. doesn't need to go yeah. a, a, an inch further. No, you're right. Looks like it's spinning there. like crazy. It is, the, the difference in ball wow. flight for you is just insane. It's exactly the same thing as the uh, is what the wedge has done. Look at that. Did you hit wow. that? Did you hit that? All I didn't the way hit there? it there, but it was slightly in the toe, not not off the end of the club. Off not the toe, in the chrome. No, no. <laughs> um, so that's a pretty good, pretty forgiving golf club. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I mean, that's. It didn't, that's it didn't feel like a shot that would have spun, I'll, I'll say that much. Mm. Mm. Okay, set a couple more and see what's what. Yep. Pulled that a bit. That certainly sounded. Yeah, solid. Very Felt solid. like I pulled it, but. But that's, not, that's fine. not getting away from you at all. No, I'm curious what that spun at. Ooh. 59. I like there that. Well, oh, it was quick as well. Mm hmm. I love it when the numbers work out. <laughs> <laughs> Almost makes it sound like we yeah. know what we're talking about. <laughs> well, that's the one where, like, when, you, when I make contact, I know I, I got it shut and pulled it, and I'm yeah. expecting to just have a disaster. Like that, right. that is your, that's a really good point. That's the one that gets in the high fours and, and mm -hmm. goes 10 yards yeah. further. Right. That's good. Yeah, sounded nice. Looks really, really good. That landed on the fringe, otherwise I don't think it would have jumped like that. Yeah, I mean, we normally regulate the, the conditions uh, a little bit more on, on the greens. We haven't actually touched the, the conditions, so mm -hmm. they're, they're set pretty much pretty normal. Firm, yeah. And, right. Yeah, um, tend to find that the quad kind of gets it to roll out a little bit much, but... Mm -hmm. 
That spun 6,300. 6,300. Wow. It was a little thin too. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, it, it's fairly safe to say that there's, there's about 800 yeah. to 1,000 RPMs of difference in those two On golf balls iron? for you. Right. Which is... There's uh, a real, a real difference. We don't normally see no. anything, I won't call it insignificant, but it's not like that. Right. Like yeah. Pro V1 to Pro V1X, I think, is a couple hundred for me at most. Definitely. Um, so that's, that's some decent separation, which is good. The one thing that, no, that I really notice when you hit this one is when I'm watching your ball speeds and they're very, very similar. That last one was a good example. 137, it matches the average of when you hit the, the, uh, the standard one. Mm -hmm. it, it's significantly shorter, this one. Yeah. So the, 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 the spin is definitely helping you with your distance control. It's and regulating it nicely. It is. Yeah. It is right. It's giving us those yardage uh, numbers, allowing us to hit those a little bit easier. Hmm. Much more stopping power. Similar apex. Yeah. A little bit uh, steeper land angle. And, and most of that attributed to compression. It really is yeah. the biggest part of its compression. I mean, they've got very similar covers, very similar inner, inner cores yeah. and everything. It's just the compression is simply that has been changed. And it's not, it's not like other, maybe some companies are going three piece and four piece in their X to standard golf Correct. ball. These are both four piece. They're both, both oh, okay. the same sort of uh, cover. Yeah, you almost see between a lot of them, you'll see different compression. Then you'll see that paired with different mm. you know, construction yeah. in terms of three or four piece and even different dimple patterns yep. as well, mm -hmm. which will ultimately sometimes bring those two closer together. So one of the things we tried to do is keep a little bit of separation yep. by having literally the compression be the change. None of those other factors are bringing them closer yeah. together because ideally you want to be able to see those differences so yeah. you can say, well, I'm clearly the RV tour. I'm clearly well, the RV tour X. That would be my feedback if I was just a customer. The confusion I think comes from when they're too close together. Right? Yeah. This to me is an easier sell to pick between the two of them because you can, you can quantify it so oh, much easier. So much easier. I'm not picking on Titleist, but when I hit Pro V1 and Pro V1X, I know. It, there's, the window's tight. Mm -hmm. It's really not much. I, I, can, I can vividly picture the numbers from that, that, um, that video when we yep. were kind of going, it's kind of hard for us to, to really tell which Just one's which here. You know, they're doing similar stuff. Like this is so black and white. Yeah. This is right. this is as is, is, is kind of polar opposite yep. as you can get, but I just you know I'm selfishly thinking of, of this like a from a fitter standpoint and mm. going well if I've got a sleeve of each of these, and I can see within the first five minutes who I've got in front of me, I'm probably going to go okay um, <clears throat> let's let's hit some right. more with that one. I'm right. going gonna, to put I'm going to unbox or I'm going to box those other ones up and yep. keep them away from me because you know the the, the ball fit can really be the icing on the cake to right. do the, the fitting session mm. and, and really be the last piece of the puzzle that just sure. kind of um, establishes those launch conditions. It's such an overlooked part of the fitting, I so but I mean, well. you use it in every shot. I mean, yep. you can really fine tune yeah. things with cool. that ball fitting as well. So true. Can you ever? I yep. know. No, good stuff. Okay, let's, let's see drivers. what we see uh, with the big stick. This is always the fun one. <laughs> I'm curious what this is. I'm gonna really do. curious about <laughs> this one. That's giving you, like the cut ball is interesting, but it, it's almost too extreme for a mm -hmm. lot of players. I feel like this is gonna be a nice slot for you. Completely agree. <clears throat> Higher spin, but not goofy. Like the cut ball, right. I was spinning like 7,000. Wow, really? I don't really? have any spin on the ball. Remember a couple of those six irons were like I 69. Know. I was laughing on, yeah. like, on Which would camera. be great in good conditions, but if, if it you gets it, windy, yeah. then that could, you could be, oh, I would hit it you're struggling with the other. The That's other like one. how I used to hit my six iron. So they, they, <laughs> they sold out of that golf ball. They, I know. I Did you hear that? Oh, wow. So I, I would love to know what the number was on the day. Somebody sent me a message the other day, and uh, so they were like, you guys should really, really be kind of on some preferential feedback. terms. And then <laughs> that video apparently sold out that golf ball for them. Really? So everyone who was needed more spin yeah. apparently went online and, and literally bought up the supply. How cool is, is that? crazy. That's, that's but nuts. fair enough, because it, it really did the job right. so well. Okay, Matty, RB Tour, we've, uh, we've built the Mizuno driver back up for you. Yep. You've been desperate to hit this again. <laughs> been looking for an excuse. When you told me Chris was coming, I'm like, oh, good. I know. All right. This is the fitted version, right? Yeah. It's better? Yeah. It's in the heel. Better. Okay. Yeah, that should work. A little more loft. Yeah. Closer. There we go. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we that's, see. That's good, yeah. That's exactly what we normally see. Hit that one well. Mm hmm. That's a boy, there we go. That's the long one. Yeah. Yeah, it is definitely a little bit high it's in the face. Scooter. Um, you guys were talking earlier a little bit about the pr 
price the, the price point of the golf ball. Right. Um, where where is that going to sit? So it sits. It's in that premium range. Yeah. So it's you know it's talking U.S. dollars. It's right. sitting at uh, forty three dollars. Okay. So it's a little bit you know it's a little bit above the Bridgestone, mm -hmm. the Strixon, but it's below the Pro V One. So it's still in that premium range, but yeah, it's yeah. not in that you know ultra premium, sure. super yeah. expensive, especially as a first ball to the market. For sure. So uh, and and I think that's. That's great for people to hear that it's in that that competitive range, yeah, and right. where I think Shrix and, and and Bridgestone have had you know their way in that little kind of okay, just one one tier below right. uh, Pro V One. Yeah. Um, in the US, is is TP Five the same sort of price point? TP Five is, is right around there. It may be forty five dollars, right, so it's okay. right around where TP Five is. I'm not yeah. exactly sure on that, yeah. but it's right there. It all sounds so good because we were forty five dollars for forty five dollars. No. <laughs> Tack 33% on that for yep. the rest Just of Just come them. visit us. We'll, we'll, stock, <laughs> no. we'll no. stock your bags full of balls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matty. Let's down. see one more. This is the same look in that one. It's flat. Yep. It definitely looks like it's low spin. Seriously low spin. <laughs> <laughs> Explains why the ball was fighting through it at the PGA show. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's switch into the X. I mean, really, from what we've seen so far, this should just, this should just slot in Should perfectly, it. Yeah. shouldn't it? Well, we haven't seen many balls that get much difference on a driver, have we? We, we haven't seen too many. Usually, no, it's no. pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. Well, and typically, as the spin rate is lower, mm -hmm. then the compression is not going to make as big a difference. You won't see as big a okay. separation. Right. Right. So it makes sense that it's, mm -hmm. they, they tend to tighten They're up coming. as you get you know, it's longer mm. in the bag. Right. Still expect to see some difference though, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see what this does. I hit that pretty well. Yeah, it was really good, wasn't it? Looked to me like it was a little more stable, but Bit. So on that launch angle, that was the one earlier on that was was kind of falling out the sky because mm -hmm. it was like fifteen hundred oh, okay. RPM, right. and that's twenty two hundred. So it's yep. it's kind of hung about. Yep. Certainly, eighty three is fairly flat, but hmm. pretty good little high in the face. Nice was that in the Matt Bloy region of the high toe? <laughs> no, just high center. <laughs> that felt like the middle, I think. Yeah, that's, go. that's got to be the one. Yep. I'll call that the most kind of neutral, good swing, good strike that I've hit mm -hmm. with that ball. Yeah. And a little, little bit higher spin. That's got a little more spin on it, doesn't it? Yeah, that was that was really the first one um, with that one. I think you've probably put that that strike on and been able to kind of keep the launch up and yeah. spin down at the same time. Yeah. Um, Interesting. So compre the higher compression ball, you got more ball speed from. Correct. Okay. So it makes makes perfect sense. We we did spin it a little bit higher. I mean. At the risk of sounding cliche, it does exactly what it was supposed to. Right. Well, and that's the whole thing is we talk about, if you read on our website and our mm -hmm. literature on it, we talk about the fitting story behind them, mm -hmm. where if you're a player who hits up on the ball, perfect example of and that, yeah. typically you, can pit, you tend to benefit from a little bit more spin because mm -hmm. you're naturally taking spin off. Right. So that's where the RB2 or X is a ball that fits you better because yeah, yeah. it's not falling out of the sky. However, you're somebody who hits down on the ball and really you know, imparts a ton of yeah. backspin on it. Yeah, yeah. The RB2 is an example to pull some of that, ball, some of that spin, spin down away. and give you a little bit more control. And would that map pretty much to the design process, Chris, that, that we were seeing sort of, you know, 800 to 1,000 with the wedges and irons and then about half of that with the driver. It makes, it that, makes that, perfect that, sense because you look at the right. launch angle difference between them and the amount of mm -hmm. speed between them. Yeah. As that spin rates get lower as mm -hmm. a percentage, you're not seeing too big a difference right. actually. Yeah. But as the spin rate drops from call it 10, 11,000 down to 2,000, yeah. that drop coming down significantly makes a lot of sense. Mm. Sight on profiles of, yeah. of the wedges certainly. Uh, you can yep, see the X a little bit more yeah, penetrating. Yeah, it was. Hmm. I mean, it was. It was. And it, I think we saw the exact same thing on the iron. Yep. Similar. Yeah, but definitely big spin. Big spin difference. Right. Launch was was sort of in the same window. 
Very interesting. I think the la like launch, I would expect probably you would get a little lower. I don't think I struck the last three iron shots quite as well. Right. But mm -hmm. that being said, the, the spin being that much higher was even more interesting because it didn't mm. flush them, I don't think. Right. Well, you're an RB, uh, you're an RB Tour X guy. Apparently, yeah. It's really good. <laughs> it's free ball speed with the higher compression. That's good. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. We, we, <laughs> I know, I know. We've seen pretty much one or two every time we do mm -hmm. higher versus lower compression. So if someone is on the lower end, likely they'll want to go with a 90 compression ball and possibly get a bit more pop on, generally yeah. speaking. Unless the spin profile, I guess, doesn't fit them, then they may want to consider that elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. No, that's, that's exactly, exactly it. And um, I think there'll be so many people will be excited that this is, this is something that they can kind of go test themselves, grab a, I mean, is there, is there like a trial one, uh, a trial pack or something like that where people can go do that? Or not, just, just, not at the moment. Just go, not, get, go get a sleeve of each. The, the biggest thing is try a sleeve of each. And yeah. we're working on with our fitting software how to recommend that better. And that's, that's something that's that cool. hopefully in the yeah. future you'll be able to see some stuff where you could walk in and say, mm. you know, fit me for a ball, which yeah. more people should say and I know, ask. I know. Definitely. Yeah, Absolutely. I think we, we're, we're seeing that, aren't we? The, the value. Of, of kind of recommending that to people more and more you know which which ball do you play because we're seeing a set of numbers up here and yeah. we know that if if they're playing our ball and they go play something else we have to be mindful that it's true you know in, in real real world conditions if, if they're taking a different golf ball and and it can completely change that scenario 100 percent, it can yeah. i mean it yeah. showed very consistent swings and just yeah. one ball to the next dramatically different so launch totally different numbers. ball play yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it's, as you say, you've, you've found another fitting tool that you didn't realize maybe initially that it was that significant, yeah. but you've been able to take, you know, maybe more of a change than a shaft change would make. The ball has made more, more launch condition difference. I, I say that to people all the time. Now, people are, are asking me all the time, Chris, you know, what's, what's the, the low launch, low spin shaft right. combination? <laughs> I can I'll just go, you know, what else are we dealing with? What other kind of parameters are we dealing with? But right. I, I'll be much more inclined to, to kind of give them a, a ball solution yeah. if, if, that's, if that's what it's uh, going to be because it's a lot, uh, it's a lot easier uh, it on them. It's a lot easier in the wallet, that's for sure. sure. Yeah, just buy a box of balls. Yeah. <laughs> Got to do it anyway. So. <laughs> go test it. Go see. You come back and tell us. It's very that's true. the old Harvey Pennick one when, uh, that's what he said, yeah. Yeah, well, he's, when uh, Tom Kite and uh, Davis Love, I think it was, wanted to learn how to hit a flop shot. And he gave them both a bag of balls each. And he said, you come Just back and tell it. me, go figure it out. <laughs> you know, because so, that's the thing, you've got to go and experience these things yeah, right. uh, in for order sure. to, to see if it, if it works in the field. Yeah, and a lot of it, I love it that you know what you're looking for in a ball. Whereas yeah. if your error was that it was long, sailing long on irons for and sure. too little spin, mm -hmm. you knew which direction to pull it. One of the big things is people ask, I want high launch, low spin. And that's, mm -hmm. that's thinking driver yeah. down as for opposed sure. to short green, short sure. game up. Yep. So it's really just understanding and speaking with your fitter what, yep. what you're looking for. And we've tried to preach that a lot, haven't we? Tried to start at the green and work your way back to the tee. And right. you know, think of the club that you're going to you know, use the most. Uh, in order to try and get that ball to work uh, the best it can. Makes sense. Good, this excellent. Good. Um, guys, this has been, this has been fun. Mm -hmm. This has been um, really, really insightful for us to have Chris explain the differences behind the, the design process and, and kind of what you guys went through to develop uh, a golf ball that was suitable for the North American market. Yeah. So this has been a lot of fun. Really yeah. good. Really, really good to good. see another ball that uh, people can kind of get out there and try and have an option at fittings. Definitely. Absolutely. And this is available in kind a of big box store, pro shop. It's available. As of right now, we're, of right we're, now. we're good. Let's All go. Right. <laughs> go, guys. Yeah, go, go try it. I mean, if, sure. if, if you see yourself in either of these categories where you could benefit from, you know, some of these launch conditions that Matty uh, is, is seeing, you know, especially, I think especially the higher spin option. I think, I, I think if anyone needs a bit more spin but wants a proper four-piece tour ball, I don't think there's been anything else. I, again, like the cup yeah. ball was really good, but yeah. mm -hmm. you marked it as an extreme. It's super, It was super an extreme. High, which yeah. is great for some people, but if you don't quite need that, I think this is the first one we've tested that mm -hmm. slots in just below it. It's Gives great. you more yeah. spin, but not quite as extreme. Done. All right. Excellent. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you.